Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Snort with Creative Community Solutions. And again, we are here at Poplar Hill Missionary Baptist Church. We're just concluding services for the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Service Program today. We have some extraordinary people doing some extraordinary things professionally, community-wise, and otherwise. And we're here with such a person. <laughs> so could you introduce yourself? Hi there, my name is Rodney Harris, and I am a resident of Gwinnett County, born and raised here. And I am currently a juvenile court judge in Gwinnett. All right, Judge Harris, first off, thank you for taking time out with us. One of the first questions I have is something I've asked everybody. We understand today is a holiday, and all of us, or many of us, have heard about the work and impact of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. What does this day and what does his work mean to you? Um, this day has shaped my life, I guess Dr. King's life and legacy has shaped my life since I was an infant. Um, my grandmother had the foresight to take me to see Dr. King's body. I was five years old. I remember standing in that line. It seemed like it took eight, nine hours. We get in there. I'm not paying attention because I'm five. But we come back outside. Now, we took us seven, eight hours to get in it. Go back outside. I said, hey, mama, she's why I said, I didn't get to see that man. So instead of giving me a whipping, she got at the end of the line and we waited again. That's how important it was for her to see that. Wow. So that right there, just a, and then once I got older, you know, you, you take into like, your grandparents tell you stuff in it. But my grandparents on both sides of my family made sure that I was going to be the one to do something, no matter what it was. But they just instilled in me that thing that you got to help somebody else. You got to go and try to do this. You got to improve that. You just can't sit and do nothing and talk about it. You got to have some action behind it. Okay. Walk through with this, and you've kind of already done it, but walk through with this based on the work you're doing in the legal capacity. How do you see yourself incorporating elements of Dr. King's philosophy as well as incorporating elements of how you go about your day to day? I think you have to remember that you didn't get to where you are by yourself. It's sort of like you see a turtle on a fence post. He had to have some help to get there. Mm -hmm. And there are so many people that have helped me get to where I am. I have to pay it forward and pay it backwards, sideways, because I will never be able to repay it, ever. So whenever I see somebody that needs some help, if, if I got it, you got it. And I don't know how many people got my phone number. I give my phone every time I speak somewhere, every time I go, everybody gets my cell number. So if you got a problem, I may not be able to help you, but we're going to find out. We're going to figure the problem out. And I think we as a community, the minority community, the black community, are getting away from what worked. A lot of folks don't go to church. A lot of folks don't live in a community that's tight-knit. You don't know your neighbors. So I try to just keep that and maintain that because it takes a village, really, to, 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 to get you where you are. Um, I can remember when my grandmother, when I was in college, and we were poor, but she'd go through the community and says, hey, y'all know that boy's in college, give me $5. And <laughs> they would give me some money to get, to get through school. <laughs> you know, so it almost, it every almost, little bit helps. <laughs> you know, what you just said almost sounds like those old school rent parties yeah. that, that folks had, but, you, but you, you spoke to the importance of community, the relevance of community. Mm -hmm. And another thing I was listening to, a charge I have to keep. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, I can't complain about something if I'm not willing to change it. Um, I was the first black judge to have his own courtroom, his own staff, everything. And you thought that would have happened 100 years ago. But this is the thing. I'm not going to complain about it. First, I started protesting. I was bald-headed. So I started letting my hair grow. And now you see the results. <laughs> <laughs> so I told them I wasn't going to cut it until they got a black judge. Mm -hmm. And then they appointed me, and then I cut it off. And then they did something else, I let it grow again. So I can't remember what they did last time. But, I mean, seriously, though, I'm, I'm telling you, I am so country that I think that sometimes people kind of take advantage of that. But I'm still there because everybody in my old neighborhood, I'm telling you, if I can go there now, and it could be somebody that's drunk, somebody that's on drugs, but if I need some help, somebody's going to come and help me. And I'm going to help them the same way. So that's that's just where I was raised, man. 
the preachers on both sides of my family, the preachers from the churches, ate at my grandma's house every Sunday. And then if somebody else walked up, man, but come on in and get you something to eat. I mean, that's just where it was at my house. So, mm -hmm. um. hey, see, see now, you, see now, you're giving me flashbacks of uh, growing up and spending time in the summer uh, at mm -hmm. my grandma and granddad's. You know, shucking corn. But that exactly. But that's what peas. got you here. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's what's got you here. Mm -hmm. And you can't forget that. You can't never think you better than somebody else mm -hmm. because you have a title. And this is the thing they all oh, just come look. My name is Rodney. My mama named me Rodney. I got to remember that because a lot of people get we call it robitis. You get that robe and then they go crazy. And they they forget, like, you still put your pants on the same way I put mine on. And I, I, I don't park in the secure parking. We got judges, we got secure parking, we got security. I park out front with everybody else. They're like, judge, you got, I look at him. Depends on how you talk to people. People know they're going to go to jail. If they done, done something wrong, most people know they're going to jail. You ain't got, are oh, you a scourge of the earth? You, you ain't got to do all that. <laughs> okay, sir. <laughs> go to death and just be done with it, you know? Most people know when they messed up, when they done wrong. So you ain't got to just beat them. You ain't got to beat them down. They already know. Look, in that sharing and exchanging, the operative theme that I keep hearing is perspective. So as we get ready to wind this down, what measure of insight or perspective would you like to give to not only the community that you serve but the communities beyond which we're serving you can't expect improvement if you're not willing to help simple as that run that back one more time for you, the people in the back <laughs> you can't expect improvement if you're not willing to help you gotta pitch in that's it if you if you want something to improve get out there and start doing it so that but nobody everybody wants somebody else to do it and you can't i mean me and one of the deputies in Gwinnett started a mentoring program about 13 14 years ago it's called strap mm -hmm. we meet with these kids for six months every saturday and we teach them different things we go to the morgue we go to georgia Gwinnett college we um take them on a tour of the jail we do lots of stuff with them and just show them like look you can go to this college. This is the financial aid people that's going to help you go there. So you don't need some money. So we try to give them some different avenues as opposed to a gang. Because the gangs don't tell them something until they go to jail. And then, you know, mm -hmm. but get be that void. Because when I grew up, we spent more time at the church than we did in school. So, but see, no, not, that doesn't happen now. Most of the kids I see in court have no idea what the church is. They don't go. The parents don't go. So, you know, you're missing that big opportunity. Then if you drop out of school, that's the other element that kept you kind of safe. At least mm -hmm. you got a meal at school. You went in, you learned something, hopefully. But now, most kids don't finish school. The parents don't have like a sense of community where they feel like they can go and, you know, seek refuge, I guess would be the right mm -hmm. term. Um, so that's what we try to fill that gap with. We are some people that are willing to help you out. All we need you to do not break the law and follow the rules and we'll be good. If you do that, I'm going to be here for you. I can't tell you how many times I go to court for other people and do something. They're like, just what you're doing here. I, I, that's my cousin. I got to help him out. Of, that's a friend I met yesterday. I got to help him. And and that's that's just the way I grew up, man. I mean, if you can help somebody, help him. Simple as that. Well, again, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't remember anything else, <laughs> stewardship is not sedentary. And the gentleman to my, to my right is an example of it. So we thank you for taking and making time. Best wishes, continued encouragement for the good work you're doing and the great work that you still yet to do. All right. Thanks, sir. All right. Thank you.